Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We have been talking a lot about shallow water lately. So today we are going out fishing. We're on the jet boat so we can get extra skinny. We are going up in the shallows to catch some bass. Now, anytime you go into the shallows this time of year, there are going to be spawning fish. So there are people that love fishing for spawners. There are people that despise it. But the reality is if you're up in the shallows, you will be interacting with them whether or not you can see them. So today we're fishing for both pre-spawners and spawners. If we come across a bed fish, uh, I'll probably fish for it, give you guys some tips for that, give you some pre-spawn tips as well. But we're going to focus our attention on kind of two ends of the spectrum. We'll do mostly finesse fishing. You know, the Senko is a major player this time of year. A BFS setup, little Ned baits, that sort of a thing. Um, finesse jig. And then on the other end of the spectrum, swim baits. In case we get the opportunity to interact with some big ones, I brought out a glide bait and a soft bait as well. We're just gonna go out here and have some fun. So come along, I'll give you some tips along the way. Hopefully we get a chance at both pre-spawners and spawners because I do have some sight fishing tips for you as well. Let's get to it. fish that guy ate a it's not gonna be a surprise he ate a five inch wacky rigged Senko green pumpkin and black All right, guys, this fish right here, this is something I want you to understand. I'm almost positive that this fish just came off of a bed, but it was in, hang on, let me get that hook. It fell back towards the gills. I don't want to hook it. There we go. That fish was in about six feet of water but he was on a light spot. So I don't have great clarity here. I can see maybe three to four feet reasonably, maybe three foot reasonably. But beyond that, I can kind of see lights and darks. So I could see a lighter area. I think one of the things that people get obsessed with in the springtime is physically seeing the fish. They get right up on the bank, right up over the top of the fish to see them. You don't have to do that. You can catch way more fish from a distance casting in. You don't have to see them the rest of the year to catch them. You don't have to see them right now to catch them. Um, so don't worry about physically seeing them in a lot of situations. Now, don't get me wrong, I do love to see them if I have the chance, but I've got chop on the water here. I'm not gonna see them clearly. Uh, if we get into calmer water, I'll talk to you about sunglasses. There's, there's some huge things there. Uh, but again, today we're just out here having some fun. Let's see if we can get another one. <laughs> oh, come here, buddy. Another nice one on the Wacky Rig Senko. These aren't giants, but they are good, solid, 
springtime fish. We're just out here having fun. That was yet another one on a five inch Senko. So that fish right there, he came off of a stump or little stick up, some little piece of wood there. One of the really neat things about this time of year, most of the year when you're out on the water, you don't really know where the fish are. We spend most of our time trying to help you guys learn how to create patterns, figure out where these fish are sitting. But as fish go into the shallows, whether or not they're spawning, that's irrelevant. When fish go into the shallows, they wanna be around cover because they're up so shallow, they're vulnerable, right? Animals can get them, other fish can get them, birds can get them, birds is a major one. Ospreys, eagles. So with that in mind, the location of these fish is incredibly predictable. Every piece of cover is a target. So pre-spawn fish or spawning fish, you can go into a cove like the one I'm in and see the pieces of cover and throw right to them and know that those are the most likely places for there to be a bass. It really makes it easy. It also makes it easy if you have muddy water to still catch spawning fish. So you don't have to see them to catch them. Couple of things for you. Number one is that this time of year, March, April, May, if you throw a bait out and you're fishing along and you get a short strike, throw right back to the same place. I mean, right back. The reason why is a lot of times those buck males will just move that bait off. They're not really eating it, just sort of messing with it. So you'll get a bite, you'll swing and miss. But if you throw back in there and you get bit again, what well, doesn't matter if there's zero visibility, you know that's probably a spawning fish and you can sit there and fish for them. And oftentimes, oh, ho, 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 ho. that fish just broke me off over the top of a stump, darn it. 12 pound fluoro is no match for a stump. Bummer. I'll grab a hook here in a second, but you can throw back to that spot and you might catch that little buck male or you might catch a giant female. The other thing is even if you can't see, again, you know spawning fish will tend to build up against something in shallow water. So up against stumps, laydowns, pilings on docks. Those are all likely places for you to cast. came off. I am so shallow back in here. So shallow. I'll show you on the way out. That last fish was in such skinny water. It's crazy how shallow this jet will go. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering like, why did he bring the jet out? Are they really that shallow? Let me show you what I'm driving through right now. And actually on that note, I have been getting a ton of questions about the boat. So we did a tour of this boat, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago when I first bought it. So I'll put a link to that down in the video description, but basically it's a War Eagle 1754, uh, but we have done a ton, a ton of work to it since then. The boat itself stock was not the boat that I needed, but we, completely redid it. So the decking, everybody's been asking about the decking. That's reflex decking, completely changed the look of the boat. And then here's the big deal. See this transom. So Mike Watson, I don't know if you can read that. Mike Watson is a guy who, well one, he's an amazing fisherman, uh, used to fish on the elites, still fishes bass opens, uh, but the guy is an incredible welder and builds some of the most remarkable tunnel hole boats there are so i got this boat up to mike built a complete tunnel hole pods on the back so what that did is it raised up the back of the boat with the pods and then we raised up the motor you can see where the transom stepped up 
and then it's got a tunnel hole underneath so we can run in just inches of water and if anything hits it's the boat it's not the motor so it protects your motor running in that crazy crazy shallow water uh, if we had more room we could get on pad and run across this without hitting bottom it's really incredible so again it's a war eagle but it's a war eagle with an incredible amount of work reflex decking it's got a custom mike watson transom and tunnel hole and everything in it just awesome and then electronics wise helix 9 at the console i did put an ultrex on the front it's got a yamaha 70 jet on it and this boat will go just about anywhere now before we move on to our next spot i do want to give you guys some sight fishing tips uh again today we're not necessarily sight fishing i'm pretty sure one maybe two of these were bed fish i think the rest of them were just sitting up around cover uh, but one of them, I mean, it was sitting on a light spot. I couldn't make out that it was definitely a bed, but I'm pretty sure it was. Listen, this time of year, if you're in the shallows, you just have to face the music. You probably are catching some spawning fish, whether or not they're sight fish. Uh, this time of year, we try to do sight fishing related videos or spawn related videos and every time we do i mean there are some people that just get so upset about the subject some people are adamantly against fishing for spawning fish other people totally okay with it i think i'm probably somewhere in between i used to fish for them a lot anymore i don't do much of it but i mean let's get real if i come across a 14 pounder sitting on a bed i'm probably going to fish for that fish uh, and you probably are too. So I wanna give you some tips. And the reason why is that most people, if they don't understand how to do it, will still try. I mean, if you run across a big one, you're gonna try and fish for them. And you can spend hours messing with that fish and really screwing things up whether or not you catch them. And then a lot of people just are, are uninformed about what to do to release those fish. So I wanna give you some tips because one, it can make it easier to catch them. You can catch them, get a great photo, get them back in the water. And two, I wanna give you a little education about the spawn too. So when these great big fish come up into the shallows, they are pretty vulnerable. That's not to say they're easy to catch. Some bed fish are incredibly easy to catch. Others will drive you nuts for hours and hours and hours, or even days on end. Uh, not all of them are easy, but some are. So when these big fish are up there like that and they're vulnerable, you've gotta be aware that you could do a lot of damage to a fishery in a hurry by keeping those fish. So I'm not gonna tell someone not to sight fish or not to fish for spawning fish. Um, if it is within your legal right in the state you live in, by all means, go for it, but treat those fish with respect get them back in the water immediately. Um, I'll give you some tips on how to do it quickly to catch those fish and then take a couple of great pictures. If you want to get a mount done, get some great measurements. You can get a replica. A, a modern replica mount will last 10 times longer than a skin mount. What I mean is if you kill the fish and get it mounted the old fashioned way, uh, over the course of your life, that mount will completely fall apart. If you get a replica done, it will look as good the day you leave this earth as the day you got it done. So replicas are actually a better product anyway, let alone not having to kill the fish. So if you catch a big one, get photos, get a couple quick measurements. If you don't have a measuring tape, grab your line, cut your bait off, stretch your line down the length of the fish, cut it off. Take your line, wrap it around the fish, cut it off now you've got a length and a girth two pieces of line put them away and when you get home measure them it's that easy so don't worry about making a big mess of it but these fish get them back in the water because one they are vulnerable two they're at their weakest the spawn is very very hard on these fish so it's important to make it as easy on them as possible. Uh, they can die just from the stress because they haven't been eating. Uh, they've been working very hard in the actual act of spawning. It's just a tough time on those fish. Now, with that said, I do have some tips on how to catch them. First, your clothing. Uh, notice I'm wearing a camo. More importantly, I'm just wearing natural tones. 
Uh, once fish go into the shallows, whether or not you're actively sight fishing for them, wearing bright colors is a mistake. You better believe those fish can see you coming and it can make a huge difference. So dull, natural colors make a big difference. Sunglasses. Having the right glasses is key. Uh, many of you know, maybe not all of you, that Tim and I designed our own glasses with I Surrender uh, over the last few years. These are the I Surrender Tactical Bass and Sunglasses. Two lenses specifically for sight fishing. This is copper. So you can see the copper lenses there. Copper is what I'm wearing today, and that's because if you look over the side of the boat, that water's got a lot of sediment in it. It's stained water. Uh, it's not crystal clear. Copper will see through sediment better than any other lens color. So if you've got some stain to the water, you can only see a foot, two foot, three foot. Copper is the deal. If that water gets any clearer, you go to amber. Now amber, and this is a very specific amber lens that Tim and I worked forever on. This lens will see deeper than any other lens I have ever dealt with from any brand. And I have spent years as an angler, as a guide, comparing, trying to find my best option. Uh, and I really think we knocked it out of the park and got the absolute best, clearest, deepest seeing lens that you can get for clear water. Uh, and then we did it at an affordable price on purpose. We wanted you guys to get the best quality, still be able to afford them, uh, and then now I will say like amber, not an everyday sunglass. Okay. Um, Tim's favorite color is green for everyday wear. Uh, mine is the gray, but ambers are specifically designed to amplify light. In other words, to make light more harsh. So they're not good for your eyes to wear day after day, after day, after day, after day in the bright sun for sight fishing. They're magic. But after sight fishing season is over, I put them away. I wear them when I'm sight fishing. I wear them when I'm driving in low light. Uh, if I'm running a boat at night, first thing in the morning, last light. That's what they're for. They amplify light. They make it brighter than it really is. And it's remarkable how well it works. I can see beds feet deeper than the people that come out fishing with me. Uh, and that's not just because I've trained my eyes. It truly is because of that specific lens. Uh, so sunglasses make all the difference in the world. Polarized glasses, one, and then copper for that stained water with actual sediment in it, whether that is uh, dirt that's stirred up in it or whether that's pollen stirred up in it. Copper for that, amber for the clear water will change everything. Beyond that, couple quick tips. Uh, there are some key baits. I won't go into all of that, you know, bluegill style baits, jigs, the Sanko. Uh, you don't want to throw long baits that are easy for them to short strike. You want compact baits, uh, but bluegill swim baits are remarkable. Down in the video description, in addition to what I'm fishing with today, which for the most part is just Sanko, I'm just out here having fun today. This is just old school bass fishing, standing on the nose of the boat in a foot of water and just making bomber casts, catching fish. Uh, but in addition to what I'm throwing today, I'll link you some of those key sight fishing baits. The last tip I want to give you without just going too in depth with all of this, uh, actually two more tips. One is that if I know that that bed is up here, I will never put my boat between that fish and open water. Okay. You don't want to block their way to safety. Those fish are very aware of their best way out of the situation. Because again, they don't want to be in that shallow water. They're up there because they need to be. So they also need to know how to get out. If you set your boat in front of the way out, those fish get very skittish and very hard to catch. If you set your boat off to one side or the other so that they still have access out of there if they want to get out, their demeanor is completely different and they're much easier to catch. And then last but not least is when we think spawning fish, you watch tournaments, right? You watch the pros, you watch guys out at your local lake. Most of them are throwing white, chartreuse, bright, bold colors. And there's a time and a place for that. But really, the vast majority of my time, I'm throwing 
Green pumpkins. Blue gills. You guys know I love blue mixed with green pumpkin, the tilapia color, because that's a green pumpkin blue. Um, I like actual green pumpkin blue flake or green pumpkin blue swirl. Those are key colors. Don't think you have to throw those bright, bold colors during the spawn. That makes it easier to know if the fish has eaten the bait because you can see it. But you will get more bites, especially from pressured fish, throwing natural colors. All right, with that, we're gonna get back to fishing. Guys, I don't want to advocate one way or the other, uh, but if it's legal for you to do, and you wanna try and catch your biggest bass, I would never stop you from that. If you're one of those guys who wants nothing to do with it, and you wanna fish deep offshore during the spawn, I totally get that too. I'm somewhere in the middle, personally, but I also know that without some of the skills, if a guy's standing up there in a red jersey, throwing a bright white bait, blocking that fish from deep water, she's probably not gonna bite, and the odds go way up that he's gonna get frustrated and snag that fish. And that's what I don't want to see happen. These fish are struggling, so I wanna teach you how to do it right, and then teach you the importance of taking care of those fish and getting them back in the water immediately. Fish for them by all means, but take care of these fish because those big spawning females are responsible for the vast majority of fish swimming around your lake. And if those big females start disappearing, so does your total fish population the rest of the year. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. Let's get back to it. Oh, she's all over it. It's not a real big one. Ran out of room. That was cool. That fish was all over that glide bait. Man, what a, oh, I have it. So I just pulled up in this pocket we actually had a good thunderstorm roll through last night. So I came back in here and there's a ton of flow. I didn't really come prepared for that, but I started looking around and sure enough, got a little Mighty Max chatterbait sitting here. This could be the ticket. We got really muddy water back here and a lot of flow. That's awesome. Hey buddy. So you can see this water just changed color. Look how fat that guy is. Because he still looks normal, even though there's zero viz in the water. This was definitely clearer water yesterday afternoon. And it just muddied up during the night. But he's just up here in the current. <laughs> oh, yet another one on that five inch Senko. Just wacky rigging. These are not the biggest fish in the world. I had plans to go out and throw a swim bait with you for a few hours of the day. But I've got to say, I'm just having a blast. It's relaxing to just get up here in the skinny water, just pick it apart. I'm having too much fun. I don't care that they're smaller fish. I'm having a ball. Just got 
me. <laughs> she came back for more. Look at that burrito. I couldn't resist. I had to end with a swim bait. Look at that burrito just choked. Oh my goodness. That fish meant business. Look at this. <laughs> oh. No such thing as too big of a bait. They will eat them. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. Today was just what I needed. Just some old school bass fishing. Getting up dirt shallow, pitching that Senko around, throwing a chatterbait, throwing a swim bait, but everything in less than three or four feet of water. And sometimes in about that much water. Just good, fun fishing. No giants today, but that's perfectly okay. That's not what we were after. Just got out here and had a blast. Uh, I'll link all the baits that I caught them on as well as the baits we talked about down in the video description. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.